Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. We are going to take you live to the White House for the president's coronavirus task force briefing. Before that gets underway, though, let's bring in our CBS News political correspondent, Ed O'Keefe, who is joining us. And Ed, I understand as we wait for the president and the task force to come out, you actually have some new reporting about the Democratic Convention. What have you learned, Ed? That's right. Uh, Elaine, good to see you again. The CBS News political unit uh, has been speaking over the last several days with party leaders uh, across the country, more than 40 in this case, uh, state party leaders, superdelegates, uh, longtime party luminaries and operatives, people who've run conventions in the past and are currently running the convention. And there seems to be near universal agreement that the convention as conceived, as originally planned to be held in mid-July in Milwaukee, has to be dramatically rethought, whether that means holding it over fewer days, uh, perhaps holding some kind of virtual convention instead. Uh, there's general agreement that that has to happen. What exactly it would look like, uh, whether the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, actually wants to formally go through with that, it's unclear. But this is the kind of consensus-making body, the Democratic National Committee, that ultimately may compel party leaders to do that. And these comments, which we were compiling over the last few days, came as Joe Biden just last night in an interview conceded that he agrees that as originally planned, the convention probably can't be held. Uh, he, he as well suggested maybe there's a virtual option or there's a way to shrink the number of days that it's held instead of four, perhaps one or two. We'll see. But uh, general consensus that given the health and safety concerns, perhaps it shouldn't be held. As one superdelegate from Pennsylvania said, do we really want to be a Petri dish in Milwaukee? There's concerns that some of these larger state delegations that won't have hotel rooms in Milwaukee, but actually are being bussed in every day from Chicago, which is about 90 minutes away, are concerned about putting their delegates on buses uh, for, for 90 minute rides to and from the convention site. They say, how can we do that when public health officials will have spent the last several months telling people, don't gather in, you know, in large groups, uh, don't confine yourself to mm -hmm. vehicles with multiple people. Uh, it's something that the, the party is, is going to have to think about. And Ed, uh, do we know, obviously, this news is just developing, but what are they looking at in terms of potential challenges here if they try to put together, say, for instance, a virtual convention? We know the stories of children, for instance, who are trying to do distance learning and that there's a technology gap, frankly, that exists. And I wonder if at this very early stage in these discussions, that's something that's been taken into consideration or raised, or is this all just very preliminary at this point? It's very preliminary. It's been raised. You know, how, how could we potentially hold a, a Zoom convention, say some, but with yeah. 4,700 plus delegates that have to be seated by the states and territories, I don't know if Zoom can hold a 4,700 plus member meeting right. that is secure and allows these people to participate in some way when they have to vote on the party platform and the nominee for president and vice president. Uh, so look, they, they have said that the Democratic National Committee has said ever since the start that they have contingency plans in place. One of the potential issues, and this could be the issue for Republicans as well in Charlotte, is that the venue for this, the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee, is also the home of the Milwaukee Bucks, who, if the NBA season resumes, could potentially be in the throes of the playoffs in June or July, around the time that the convention, uh, that the hall needs to be handed over to convention organizers to start building it out. So. There are all sorts of logistical concerns that they have to think about, just as any other organization has to be thinking about in terms of its forward planning into the summer. You know, obviously, this comes as federal officials spent that record long White House briefing yesterday outlining the best and worst case scenarios for death tolls and why it is uh, that they're urging the states and cities to clamp down on public gatherings and forcing people or at least compelling them to stay home. Uh, so this is very much top of mind. And some of the folks we spoke to, the Maryland Democratic chairman who, who spoke with one of our producers said, look, you know, the only thing people really should be thinking about at this point is the present day, the virus, and making sure that they and their family and their friends are safe and that the country can move on. And that's a fair point. But there is a lot of forward planning that goes into this that party officials are going to have to start thinking about.